Welcome to Metal Shrinking Made Easy through use of a oxyacetylene torch. Uh, this is a sped up review of a one and a half hour full length video that I put together for a friend of mine to uh, highlight how to significantly shrink down metal in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, this video shows shrinking a replacement cab corner that I had welded into place where all the body lines of that piece uh, lined up how I wanted but uh, the bottom of this formed piece that I purchased was nowhere near the shape and contour of the belly pan of my cab. Purposely welded the top left and right sides of this patch panel to lock that uh, well aligned piece in place. By locking that in that allowed me to shrink down that significantly high two to three inch pucker that was actually large large enough for me to put my whole hand between where I wanted the panel to eventually sit. So it was a pretty large pucker. Because it's impossible to get a dolly or a hammer to the back side of this replacement piece, I'm being overly cautious to not over shrink that panel, which is actually quite easy to do when using a torch. I work the problem from the outside in, meaning I never start shrinking where the actual bubble is. I start shrinking outside of it, getting closer to where the problem is. I do small shrinks outside where the real problem is kind of to harden the metal in those sections so that, that they don't move later when I do more aggressive shrinking in the heart of that pucker. The actual process of shrinking is quite easy and fast. When metal is heated to the point where it's almost molten, like when using a torch or when welding, metal always shrinks past where it once started when it's cooled. So using a neutral flame, you know, where the, the flame isn't cold, which is yellow or rich, and it's not overly hot, meaning it's blue or oxygenated. I adjust that torch so that the blue part of the flame, that cone, is about one and a half inches long or so. I then uh, just touch the point of that cone to the surface of the metal which heats a very tiny spot inside of that dime-sized orange hot spot. You know, if you have the torch too far away from where I want to shrink, all that happens is a large area of the metal just gets warm, like if I was using a propane torch. And if I have the blue cone too close to the metal, I run the risk of punching through or cutting the metal. Oxyacetylene is hot enough that it quickly heats the dime-sized metal area, and it heats that area until it starts to glow orange, while the area around it still remains cool. That's the key to metal shrinking, is the metal surrounding the area that you're trying to shrink must remain cold or, or hard. As the torch heats, a, a wet spot, which is probably smaller than the diameter of a pencil, will finally develop in the middle of the glowing area. You'll see me kind of heat a spot and heat and heat and heat, and then all of a sudden I move quickly, and that's because it goes from being an orange spot into being a wet spot inside that orange spot. The wet spot kind of looks like scum that floats on the surface of a pond. It's not a full puddle of molten metal. Molten metal is the absolute last thing you want when you're trying to shrink metal. Playing the uh, flame around slightly, when, when you see that floating scum kind of move around with the flame, or if you see sparklers shooting out from the hot spot, then it's time to remove the heat. You do not want sparklers emanating from the metal from that hot spot because what'll happen is you'll end up blowing through it and then it takes you way longer to repair than if you had just stopped and started again. So within about five to ten seconds of creating that wet spot. Like I said, you've got five to ten seconds or so. I start tapping that hot spot with a hammer and that shocks the metal causing that uh, wet spot to be absorbed into the surrounding cooler metal. Then I quench with water which cools that spot but more importantly it cools the surrounding metal so that the whole area prevents heat buildup which would eventually cause the good metal or the good sections to warp and that's not what you want. So in this video I barely tap the metal. I'm not trying to shape the metal by hammering it strongly. That would actually stretch the metal. Like if you were beating a panel into a bag or into your lap, I'm simply trying to shock the metal with that first strike to kind of squish the high hot metal into the cooler surrounding metal and then when it shrinks the metal actually gets thicker. There's many more details in the full length video which I recommend you watch if you really want to learn the details of how to shrink metal quickly without causing damage. I'm not intimidated by moving metal significant amounts anymore. Because the beauty of metal is if you make a mistake, there's always a way to fix it. Hopefully you can pick up on something that took me years of mistakes to learn the, this process. Thanks for watching. 